Hey, boys, it's Harm Nan. Today, we're going to be going over five things that I have come across throughout my journey in Grand Theft Auto Online that can save you a ton of money or a ton of time or a bit of both. So these are basically all going to be little kind of unknown or relatively unknown tricks. Some of you guys are definitely going to know about some of them. Some of you won't though. So anyway guys, we're going to get into it. We're going to start off with number five. So guys, the first thing that we're really going to be talking about is CEO Cargo and how to maximize the amount of money that you can make with it with the amount of time that you have. So I'm going to register as a Securo Serve CEO here and we're going to go ahead and sit down at my office desk here and go on the computer. So my first tip for CEO Cargo is to buy multiple warehouses, especially if you're planning on actually doing this. As you guys can see, I have a warehouse up here in the Vinewood Hills, and then I also have one downtown more. Now, the reason that you want to have multiple warehouses is because there is a cooldown after you have filled one warehouse with some crates. So say that I bought some crates for this warehouse in Vinewood. Once I complete the mission and bring the crates there, there will be like a five minute cooldown before I can buy more crates and send them to this location. So I have the second warehouse, which obviously I have nothing in it right now, but I could go ahead, come back to my CEO office and buy some more crates, fill this up. And then when I'm done filling that up, this one's cooldown will be done. So I can basically just switch in between the two of them. As you can see, my office is in the middle of both of them. I like to strategize like that because I know that I can come from here, go to the office, then go here. And then when I'm done here, go from here to here and then back to here. Makes sense, I think. Obviously, as you guys can see, there are multiple different locations for these. So you can take your pick of which ones you like. I would recommend getting a warehouse in the northern part of uh, the city or kind of the middle like you see I've got here. So that's one recommendation that I have when it comes to CEO Cargo, but I do have some more little tips and tricks with CEO Cargo. So guys, if I buy three crates of tobacco and alcohol here, there's actually a way to tell if this is going to be a three crate mission or if this is going to be three crates within one vehicle. So guys, if you can see your warehouse where you bought these two on the map still, that means you got it all in one vehicle. So that means you have the three crates within one vehicle. I don't see it on the map here. So that means that I have three separate crates that I'm going to have to pick up. So if I don't want to do this, what I simply can do is just switch sessions. So guys, obviously I don't want to do three individual crates because it's kind of a waste of time. It's going to take extra time that I really just don't want to spend picking up these crates. You can make some pretty good money with CEO Cargo, especially when it's double money for the cell missions, but I'm not really down to go and pick up three individual crates by myself. Now, I'm also not 100% sure on this, but I do believe that you get refunded because you technically didn't even start the mission. Now, if I come back to the CEO office, like you guys can see right now, we can head back upstairs and we can see if we can do another mission. So guys, let's sit down at the computer here again and let's see what we can do. Alrighty, so we're back to special cargo. We're going to go to the warehouse map. As you guys can see, we got three crates of medical supplies. Let's buy those and let's see what we can do here. We will check the mini map here. And as you guys can see, my warehouse is still here, which means that I got it in one single vehicle. So let's go outside and let's just test this out and make sure that I'm correct because I'm pretty sure that I am, but you never know. Okay guys, well it turns out that I think I got it backwards. So if your warehouse is on the map, that means you got three individual crates. If your warehouse is gone from the map, that means you got three crates inside of one vehicle. Apologies, I said that completely backwards, but nonetheless, I think you guys get the point. If your warehouse is on the map after you have launched the source mission, that means that you have got three individual crates that you have to go and get. If your warehouse is gone from the mini map, that means you got it in a single vehicle. So guys, there you have it. Apologies. Hell is going on here? All right, guys, and I have one more tip for CEO Cargo for you. Sometimes when you source cargo, you will get a mission where you have to find the crate and there's four vehicles on the map. Now there is a way to actually know which one of the four vehicles is the one that has your cargo. And the way that you can know that is the last vehicle that's on your map that flashes is the one with the cargo. So all four of them will flash, but the last one to flash will always have your CEO cargo in it. So anyway, guys, there's a couple good little tips there to save you some time and some money when it comes to CEO cargo. CEO cargo can be kind of a pain 
with these few little tips, it can make life a little bit easier. So I hope that that helped you out. Let's move on to the next thing that can save you some money and time in Grand Theft Auto Online. All right, guys, the next thing that I have for you guys has to do with the arcade. So if you guys have an arcade, you will probably know that it has an arcade safe within it that you get paid passively for. So as you guys can see, I can open up my safe. I think I just collected this, so there's probably not going to be very much money in here, but there's a little bit of money. This can pay you up to $5,000 a day in GTA Online, which isn't a lot, but it's also not nothing. You know what I mean? There's actually something that I wish that I knew when I first bought my arcade. So as you guys can see, there's a ton of different arcade games out there. Um, all different colors, all different shapes and sizes. Well, it turns out that I did not need to buy all of these different ones. I could have just bought like one or two and then placed them all over my arcade. I didn't know that. I literally probably spent five, six, seven, eight million dollars on all of the different arcade games in order to make some money back from them, which uh, I've made about two million dollars back. So the investment hasn't quite paid itself off yet. So there's a way that you guys can do this, and I figured I would show this in this video because, well, it can save you a lot of money. So to manage arcade games on PC, you're going to want to press spacebar when you sit at your laptop in the arcade office, or you're going to want to press X, I believe, on Xbox, or I think square on PlayStation, if I'm not mistaken. So I can clearly manage my arcade games here, and there's all of these different slots. So you can basically go through all of the slots, and you can select which arcade game you want want to run in all of them so if i want to run space monkey 3 in literally every single slot i can do that or if i want to run badlands revenge 2 in every single slot i can also do that i can change this to be more games if i want to like street crimes gang wars edition so as you guys can see basically you can change all of these arcade games and I don't even have all of mine set up because I kind of just found out about this. So we're going to go ahead and place a bunch of arcade games here. Uh, we'll do, yeah, that one. Let's do Invade and Persuade 2. Another one here. And you can basically just place these all over the place and it really doesn't matter too, too much. And you can save yourself a lot of money, unlike me, and you can just basically put like the cheapest arcade game everywhere in your arcade and you will get paid the same amount of money that I will, despite me spending way too much money on arcade games. So, so if you guys have an arcade or even if you don't have an arcade, only buy like one game or just use the stock game that comes with the arcade. I'm pretty sure there's one that comes with the arcade. Obviously, it's not going to look very pretty, but... I mean, you're still going to get paid, which let's be honest, that's really what matters. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for the arcade. I wanted to show that off. I thought that was kind of an important feature uh, that can save you a lot of money, unlike me. So anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Let's move on to the next thing. All right, guys. And the next thing that I want to show you is to do with the nightclub. So with the nightclub, there is the safe upstairs, which can make you semi-passive income, depending on if your nightclub popularity is maxed out or not. Now, nightclub popularity missions are not the most efficient way to make money in GTA Online, so I feel like this is a pretty ignored part of the nightclub. However, I'm going to show you something that I found really interesting. A commenter actually let me know about this the other day, and I didn't really realize it, but I always kind of wondered about it. Oh, there's a media stick for me to collect here. Okay, well, I guess I'll do that. Cool. Okay. So like I was saying with the nightclub, there is obviously the safe in it. And I have been actually running my safe and keeping my nightclub popularity a little bit higher for the last little while. And as you guys can see in my safe here, it's quite a bit of money. And what do we just collect here? I just collected something like $200,000 from this. So it's not a ton of money, but it's also completely free money pretty much. And it's totally worth it to do this. So I'm going to show you guys how to keep your nightclub popularity super, super high. So guys, you're going to want to come into your nightclub and you're going to want to take a seat at one of the computers here and access the nightclub. So as you guys can see, I've got all my nightclub stuff right here. But what we're going to be focusing on right now is going to the nightclub management, but also more so the resident DJ. So as you guys can see, there are all of these other DJs which you can book. So if you book them for $100,000, you will have the ability to request that they come to your nightclub for only $10,000. Now, unfortunately, you do have to go and pick these people up, which is just the worst thing ever, but it could be worse. And for $100,000, they're going to keep the nightclub popularity 
pretty high. So uh, yeah, they're they're doing their thing. I don't really want to dance or anything like that. So we're just going to head back into the office. All right, guys, now we're going to sit back down at the computer and we're going to access the nightclub. And as you can see, because we've already had Solomon in the nightclub before, we can rebook him for $10,000. And for 10 grand, he's going to keep the nightclub popularity pretty high, which means we earn 10 grand per day from the nightclub. So if you think about it, you spend 100 grand, get another DJ so you can rebook the other guy for 10 grand, get the nightclub popularity all the way up, make a bunch of money through the safe. Then when the popularity starts to drop, you just switch back to the other DJ and make a bunch more money. Now, I'm not saying this is the greatest money method on earth, but if you do keep this up, you will eventually make some pretty decent money from your nightclub, I have to say. So anyway, guys, that is my third tip for you guys. We're going to move on to number two now. All right, guys, and the next tip that I have for you guys is always buying supplies. Now, there's a lot of people that will tell you that buying supplies is a dumb idea. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's all this stuff. It may be a waste of money, but it certainly is not a waste of time. For example, I'm in the bunker right now, and I will show you guys just how much profit you can make for spending the 75 grand to supply this thing. So as you guys can see, I have put supplies into the bunker and I will be able to sell this for $199,500 and all the supplies aren't even gone yet. Now I happen to know that to sell to Los Santos you will get $210,000 base price and that's if nobody is in your lobby. If there's other players in your lobby you will get a little bit more money up to I believe around 20% more than $210,000. So you're looking at you know a pretty good chunk of change and you only spent $75,000 dollars to actually get the supplies so obviously if you do that calculation 210,000 minus 75,000 because that's going to be the base price so the profit you're going to be making is $135,000 off of a $75,000 investment and of course you're getting your 75k back you're getting 210 grand when you sell and the best part is when you do a sell mission at this price point it is always going to be a solo sell mission there's only going to be one vehicle with the sell mission now that goes for the bunker with some of the MC businesses it gets a little more complicated especially if you're trying to do a cell mission by yourself because we all know the MC cell missions are kind of trash especially compared to the bunker but guys in my opinion it is always worth it to just buy your supplies in GTA online these days there are so many ways that you can make 75 grand back just by being around in free mode in GTA online these days that you don't need to go and do the resupply mission that's going to take you between probably 10 and 20 minutes and you're only going to fill the bar halfway up so you're going to have to do two of them so call that 20 to 40 minutes I would say right now in 20 to 40 minutes there are a lot of ways that you can make some money in GTA right now for example security contracts are double money so you could very easily make your 75 grand back off of doing one security contract right now now every week in GTA there's always some double or triple money event going on so there's going to be a ton of ways that you're going to be able to make your money back so i would always advise you to buy supplies as long as you are not completely broke if you're completely broke you might want to steal supplies but for the most part i would say almost always just buy them anyway guys that is my second best tip that i have for you guys might seem kind of obvious it's probably going to seem obvious to the grinders they're going to know that this is obviously what you do for those of you guys who are a little bit more new to gta i think this is a very valid tip anyway guys we're going to move on to the number one time and money saver in all of Grand Theft Auto Online. Alright guys, and we're back at the arcade again for the second time in this video. So, there's a, there's something in the basement of the arcade that you guys are going to want to pick up. Now, if you don't have this already, you're going to want to come to your laptop in the office here. And you're going to want to enter into it. And you're going to want to go to the upgrades tab here. And you're going to want to buy this, the Master Control Terminal. This is the single-handed best investment that you can make in Grand Theft Auto Online as a grinder, in my opinion, or even as just somebody who wants to make some money. Now, I've got the Master Control Terminal. I've had it for quite some time. Absolutely essential, in my opinion. 
to existing in GTA Online. It makes your life so much easier. So to get in here, you're gonna wanna go down to the basement, obviously. And when you get here, the master control terminal is going to be on your left. So the master control terminal is pretty crazy. We're gonna sit down at this thing and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what you can do. So guys, when you sit down at the master control terminal, as you can see, you can manage all of your businesses from one location. So say I wanna buy supplies for my counterfeit cash business. If I register as an MC, I can click on this, I can buy supplies for it, they will get shipped there and they'll start just making product. With the nightclub, I can manage everything from the nightclub, so I don't even have to go to the club to rebook a DJ if I don't want to, I can do it from right here. As you guys can see, the popularity has gone down a little tiny bit already since I booked the Tale of Us DJ. So if I wanna keep that popularity high, I can rebook Solomon, or if I had any of these other ones, I could also rebook them. I can launch cell missions for my nightclub from here as well. I can upgrade my nightclub from here as well. I can manage my warehouse at the nightclub as well. So if I wanna switch up my technicians, I can do that. Now, of course, I can do the bunker from here as well. I can launch a cell mission if I want to. I can manage the staff, assign them to manufacturing, assign them to research or both. I can buy upgrades for this. I can resupply it, obviously. There is pretty much unlimited potential for what you can do from this place. Now, I wanna show you guys something and it's gonna tie into the first thing that we talked about. Now you can launch CEO source missions from the nightclub as well. So what I like to do is I have my nightclub right here. I've got my small cargo warehouse literally right across the street. So what I'll usually do, launch a source mission from here to this warehouse, take it there, then I'll come back here since it's right across the street, launch another source mission before my other cargo warehouse. The amount of time that I save doing CEO cargo these days is ridiculous. It's actually pretty crazy and it's totally worth it. The master control terminal is gonna cost you, I wanna say somewhere in the neighborhood of one to two million dollars, but the amount of time that it's gonna save you in this game where you can be doing other stuff is just absolutely insane and it is so worth your time. Anyway guys, that is pretty much it for the video. I really hope that these tips helped you guys out. I'm sure, like I said at the start of the video, that some of you are going to know about some of these, but some of you probably won't know about all of these either. So hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comments down below if it did help you. Leave a like also if you enjoyed or if it helped you out. Dislike if it didn't. Subscribe if you guys are new and I will see you all in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.